welcome to the channel. This is Greg, and it's been a while. So, as the world is slowly opening back up, people are allowed to travel more and more. And with me, as a flashlight enthusiast or hobbyist, let me share with you some ideas on what may be the best flashlight to take with you on your travels or trips abroad, especially for those who may not be flashlight hobbyists and people who do not want to bother with their flashlights, well, until they actually need to use them. So, in this video, I'm gonna run through some characteristics that I personally think should be in a flashlight that you will bring during your travel and some, let's say, characteristics that should not be in the flashlight that you will bring during your travel, especially for travels abroad. To start off, the flashlight that you need to bring on your travel should be, number one, uses modern LED technology, okay? So gone are the days of the old, maybe halogen bulb, mag lights, okay, that have really low brightness and eats batteries really, really fast, okay? So... I love these things. These are like vintage flashlights. They still work, but they're not very efficient when it comes to batteries. Next, number two. What do you need flashlights for anyway? So during your travel, you need to search inside your luggage, your bag. You may need a flashlight if you're walking around, seeing the sights at night and maybe you're walking back to your hotel and possibly for reading as well. That's what you need a travel flashlight for. We're not talking about tactical flashlights that you would want to use for defensive purposes or to scout an area or inspect property. Okay, so the flashlights that we're talking about today are those that have practical use during your travel. Number three, I suggest that your flashlight should not have any sharp or pointy parts. Okay, I'll, I'll maybe post a photo of an example of these flashlights maybe here on the side. So you know what I'm talking about. But it's fairly common nowadays to see flashlights with some sort of, let me see, teeth or crenulated bezels. Okay, something like this one, if you can see it. Okay. So this is designed to poke into something for possibly for self-defense. But some flashlights, for example, this uh, LZ Alpha, you can get a bezel that is actually not crenulated. Okay, you can replace the crenulated bezel with a flat okay, bezel and this would be better for travel. Somebody is Recording me too. Hi. <laughs> okay, so we should also take care that even if the crenulated bezel is not as aggressive as some other bezels of other flashlights, some flashlights still have a slight raised bezel. Okay. My point here is that for your travel flashlight, 
the bezel, even if it has some crenellation, should not be so aggressive that it would require a, a second look from people when you take it out. My fourth point, the travel flashlight that you're bringing should be non-aggressive. Aggressive is really relative and something that is aggressive to someone may not be aggressive to another person. But in general, we know what an aggressive flashlight looks like. As a traveler, you have the responsibility to make sure that your flashlight is not aggressive looking or is not offensive to some other people. Okay. We do not want to create undue attention to ourselves, especially if we're a foreigner and we do not want to take out a flashlight when we're walking around with a tactical ring and then a heavy, sharp, crenellated bezel. So we want to be discreet, but we still want the functionality of a usable flashlight. Next point, in the same line, we want your flashlight not to be mistaken as a weapon of any sort. We don't want your flashlight to be mistaken as a, a striking weapon, even a blunt weapon. We don't want it to resemble a kubotan or a spike of any sort. During our travels, we may come across police officers or people in authority that are not into flashlights and are not familiar with the different models and varieties of flashlights. So they may judge a flashlight purely based on how it looks. So we do not want our flashlight to come across as something like a weapon. Okay, number six. Okay, this is uh, debatable and some people might not agree. But personally, for my travel flashlights, I do not like them to cycle through strobe. So why? Imagine if you used your flashlight in high mode, then you need to use your flashlight back into a lower mode and you have to go through a strobe mode to do that. Imagine initiating a strobe inside, for example, when you're in the plane or if you're in a train or a sleeper bus, you do not want to turn on your strobe because it will, well, first of all, it will create attention towards you and it might cause a panic with other people that may see that strobe. Okay, so that's why we try to avoid those strobe uh, functions, especially we, when we are in public. Okay, just to make things clear, your travel flashlight can have a strobe function, but what I am saying is that it should not normally cycle through the strobe function, meaning if I press here to cycle through low, medium, high, for me to go back to low, I definitely have to pass through that strobe function, then that SOS function before I go to the low function, okay? For some other flashlights like the stream lights, you, they have 10 tap programmability so you can actually have high strobe low or just high and low things like that, and you can program that. So for this one, I removed the strobe and whatever and however I press the button, it will never cycle through that strobe function. The streamlights are actually a good option for travel, but as I 
go through the uh, other characteristics of my ideal travel flashlight, I'll show you, well, I'll tell you why this is not my first choice. Okay? So, number seven, the ideal travel flashlight for me is small, pocketable, is not bulky, and not heavy. Okay, why is this important? Well, primarily, primarily because during travel, weight is a very serious consideration. You pay for the weight that you bring. So, you want your total weight to be as low as possible. So, I do not advise carrying flashlights that are quite big and heavy and are made of materials that are actually heavier. So, for example, these copper and brass, brass flashlights, this is a Lumin Top Tool AA. This is actually a very, very good flashlight. You can get this in a lighter version. It's made of aluminum or even titanium. Just to point out, the aluminum version is actually lighter than the titanium version of this flashlight. Okay? And this is the Raylite Pineapple in Brass. Okay? It's actually a nice EDC flashlight, but it is actually quite heavy. Okay, you can actually remove the strobe function on this flashlight. So, it's actually a great travel flashlight as well. But, I advise not getting the, not bringing the brass one or even the copper one during travel because of the weight. Okay, for this flashlight, even if you get the aluminum ones, what? I do not like with the lumen tops is that they still go into strobe. Okay, what do I mean? When you turn this on, it goes into low, medium, and high, and uh, turbo funk, the turbo mode, it goes back into low, medium, high, and turbo. Okay, so it did not cycle through strobe, right? But the thing is, to activate the strobe, you have to press the button six times. So meaning, if you're actually cycling through the different modes and you cycle through it enough and you hit the button six times, you will go into a strobe function when you were just wanting to go to the next mode okay so if you have a lumen top flashlight or a lumen top tool aa you have to be mindful to cycle through the the modes slowly enough so that it will not think that you are pressing it six times and not go into strobe. Number eight, your fl travel flashlight should use common batteries. In the world, I believe the most common batteries are double A's and triple A batteries. And your flashlight should be able to use one or both of them. For me, I prefer flashlights that use the double A form factor, which means the 14500s, okay? So, these are batteries that are the same size as your double A's, but have more power in them, okay? So, if your flashlight can use 14500s and that's the best option okay but if not just get a flashlight that can use a regular double a okay 
So while I'm holding this, this is the Lumin Top FW AA, and that is actually a misnomer if uh, I'm using the term correctly, because although this uses a double A sized battery, this cannot use the regular alkaline or nickel metal hydride rechargeable double A's. Okay, it can only use 14500s. So basically, this is not my ideal travel flashlight because although I bring a charger with me to charge my, my rechargeable batteries, if ever there's an emergency and you run out of power for your flashlight, it is very likely that you can find double A batteries or triple A batteries at any convenience store around the world. Okay, so basically the FW series is out because aside from the FWAA, the other models of this kind of flashlight, which is actually very popular, uses other batteries like 18650s or 21700s, okay? So, let me show you some other flashlights that I take with me on my travel but are not really ideal. So, I love these big flashlights, okay? These are Workos TS21s one in a short tube and one in the regular long tube, okay? So this is basically the same flashlight, but you can get a different body tube so you can use different batteries. But either way, this one uses a 2350 and this one uses a 21700 battery. If you don't know what those are, then most of us do not, okay, don't bother, right? That's why these are not the ideal flashlights to take with you on your travel. Although for me, I still take either one or the other during my travel and just bring an extra battery or an extra charger, okay? So this is another option. This is a smaller workhorse flashlight, the FC11. Okay, with a short tube and a long tube, but this one uses an 18650 and this one uses an 18350. So, also very uncommon batteries. So, these are out of the running for possibly the best travel flashlight. So, how about this uh, LZ? alpha that I showed earlier, okay, these ones use a, a CR123 battery or a rechargeable CR123 battery. So if you are traveling to a place like North America that these batteries are fairly common, you may consider bringing one of these. But I will also advise not to use this one as your travel flashlight primarily because of the first few reasons that I gave, okay? This is an aggressive looking flashlight. Although it is small, okay, this is the LZ Alpha. You can get the Bravo, Charlie, and other LZ models. And these are fairly commonly used to attach to, to firearms, okay? Some people use this as their, their weapon light. So this is a recognizable flashlight that some people use for their firearms. So this is not one of my ideal travel flashlights. So going back to the subject of batteries, I said it should use common batteries. The next one is you should be able to bring your own batteries, okay? You have to consider that 
airlines have a restriction on what kind of batteries you can take on board an airplane. So you have to check your airlines and be sure that the batteries in your flashlight and the extra batteries that you bring with you are actually allowed. Okay? So that is why I always recommend that your travel flashlight use common batteries like AA or AAA batteries. Okay? Number 10, your travel flashlight should have good run time. Okay? What do I mean? When you use your flashlight and keep it running, it should not burn out in like 10 minutes, okay? Because your problem might not have been fixed within that short amount of time. A clear example would be one of my favorite flashlights and one of the most, possibly one of the most popular flashlights in the world is, not this one, is this one. Okay, this is the i3T EOS okay, by Olight. So this uses a AAA battery, okay, has a low mode and a high mode, okay. Really, really nice flashlight. I bring this with me all the time, okay. But in high mode, the runtime of this flashlight running on a AAA is just around maybe 20 minutes, okay? And if this is the only flashlight that you have, and for example, you went to another country, another place, you rented a car and you had a flat tire at night, and this is the only flashlight that you have, maybe you cannot use any other flashlight, the, even the battery of the car died, or you do not have any other light, your problem might not have been resolved in the 20 minutes that this flashlight is running, okay? You can say, oh, I can just use the low mode. Yes, but in a stressful situation, you do not want to be thinking of whether your flashlight is in a low mode or a high mode or whether it will run out of battery before you resolve your problem, okay? You want to focus on your main problem and you do not want your flashlight to be a secondary problem for you, okay? So for me, I advise my friends and family to get, if they want this form factor and this size, a better option would probably be this Streamlight MicroStream with um, higher runtime because it only has one mode, okay? Of course, the low mode of the Olight will be far longer than the single mode of this Streamlight, okay? But the single mode of this Streamlight is longer than the high mode of this Olight, all right? Something to consider. Okay, so these are other AAA batteries that I generally use. I like this one. This is the Jet Beam. I particularly like this because it has a metal tail switch. And the, and the clip actually is inserted into the body of the flashlight so in no way the clip will be yanked out of the body but still okay and it does not cycle through strobe okay so this is a good option for travel as well but as i go through the other characteristics of my ideal flashlight this will not fit into that okay so this is another small one this is a small triple a flashlight from workos okay no strobe okay but i 
feel that the the intensity of this flash light is a little too low for travel purposes. Okay, this is nice to use if you're rummaging in your bag trying to find something. Okay, this is a really nice bag flashlight. But if you're trying to walk around at night, this may not be the best option. Number 11, your flashlight should be inexpensive. What I mean, inexpensive but not cheap, okay? Inexpensive, affordable, and that may be relative to everybody, okay? Something that is inexpensive and affordable to someone may be outrageously priced for somebody else. So, I advise you to buy or get a flashlight that you can afford and it will not hurt your budget or your your finances to acquire one or several units of okay so for example these uh, nice looking ray lights okay these might be more expensive than other models that you can find that have the same that uses the same battery or has the same light intensity okay but Really, these are like really, really nice flashlights to have, to carry around. And you, if, if you can afford them, by all means, get these flashlights. These are really, really nice. Another point why your flashlights should be affordable and inexpensive is that your flashlights, sorry about that, may get lost during travel or can be or may be confiscated at the airport or when you go through customs or through safety inspections and things like that. Okay, so it might be aggressive looking and the security personnel may confiscate it for some reason. Okay, and if you're in travel, the last thing you want is to get into an argument with people in authority because you do not want to let go of your nice looking expensive flashlight. Okay, so what I advise is if a person in authority has a legitimate claim that your flashlight is not allowed or looks very aggressive or poses some sort of perceived threat, might as well just give it to them and buy another flashlight. And possibly you have a secondary flashlight anyway in your baggage. Okay? Your flashlight is not worth getting into trouble. Okay? So there's an issue, give it away. Next. 13. We're already at number 13. Your flashlight should be reasonably durable. Okay, going back to the LZs, these are notoriously legendary, tough and durable flashlights. You can go on YouTube and people are like dropping this from buildings or helicopters and these things still work. Okay, we do not have to go to that extreme. Okay, your flashlight has to withstand some basic stresses like getting wet. Maybe you accidentally fall into the swimming pool. You make a mistake of putting your pants with your flashlight inside the washing machine or your bag gets wet, okay? Or you accidentally drop your flashlight into a puddle while you're walking at night and you don't have to worry because your flashlight is reasonably shock resistant and water resistant, okay? So it doesn't have to be really a dive flashlight or super water proof, okay? It, a good rating would be something IPX4 and above, okay? This Streamlight MicroStream, which is 
popular with a lot of people and has been used by people for years is just IPX4, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So this Olight is IPX8, okay? If you don't know what IPX ratings are, they're just basically how dust resistant or water resistant something is. Next, because your flashlight is relatively inexpensive, I strongly suggest that you carry a primary, sorry, a primary and the secondary unit. I do not use the word backup and as I mentioned in a previous video, I don't like using the word backup. Okay, so your primary should be as good as your secondary or should I say your secondary should be as good and dependable as your primary flashlight. Okay, because even if you have a very, very good primary flashlight, it gets, it gets lost, stolen, confiscated, it's useless to you. So it is a good habit to have a secondary unit, a secondary flashlight, just like a pen. You need to have your primary pen and the secondary pen. And that goes to many gear items and things that you bring with you on your travel. Number 15, I highly recommend that your travel flashlight has in-body or in battery recharging. What do I mean? If your battery needs to be recharged, okay, so some of the fl flashlights nowadays have a charging port, okay, so there's a charging port that you can connect either a USB A or a USB C. That, and you can charge the battery directly on the flashlight. Okay? So I do not advise carrying disposable batteries by the box. I do recommend carrying a few pieces of batteries in a small carrying case. Okay? I just bring maybe four. Okay? These are rechargeables as well. And I just keep them in my bag. Okay, so some flashlights have charging ports in body and others, for example, I go back to my LZ. This is a flashlight that can use CR123, but this one has a charging port on the side as well. Okay, so if this is an uncommon battery, you can just use your power bank or just plug it into the wall. You can also get in-body recharging for 14500s or AA batteries. So, I'd like to talk about this flashlight. This is a Streamlight Protac 1L1AA, okay? And what is nice about this and its brother, the Protac 90, is that they have a spring-loaded battery compartment so it can use CR123, it can use AA, and it can even use AAA batteries, okay? So this is, this flashlight is actually what I consider a true prepper's flashlight because it can use basically any flashlight that, that can fit inside the body tube, okay? It doesn't say AAA battery on the packaging of this flashlight, but if you get a triple A battery, so this is just a uh, disposable triple A. You, 
put it in there. You see it doesn't even fit because the AAA battery is so small. Put it in there. And the flashlight will still work. Okay? You put, let's borrow the CR123. You put a CR123, see the difference between the CR123 and the AAA and the AA size. Okay? You put a CR123 in here. And it will still work and as I said you can remove the strobe if you don't want that function so is this my best travel flashlight well I consider this as one of my best flashlights but this is not my ideal flashlight primarily because it's a long black tube that has some crenellations in the front and if the contents of my pocket get inspected for example at an airport where you put all the contents of your pockets on a tray it has the word streamlight pro tack on the side and obviously it says it's a tactical flashlight so I don't want the undue attention to my flashlight okay so but if that's okay with you, this is a really, really good option for an all-around flashlight, for travel, and for EDC. Just a quick look at the ProTac 90. This is really a tactical-looking flashlight, and the way you hold it is actually how you hold something else, okay, that you don't want to be perceived as, okay? All right, moving on. Number 16. So your travel flashlight has to have some good grip and retention. You don't want your flashlight to slip from your hands because it's slippery. Okay, for example, these, um, these are Solar Force flashlights. This is the X3 and the X2. This uses triple A batteries and this one uses a double A sized battery. But if you would see, it's very, very smooth. Okay, some people like the look of this flashlight. I actually do. But for travel, this is very slippery. Okay, that's why I actually put a rubber inner tube around this portion so I have a grip surface when I need to turn it on okay otherwise it's very slippery okay and it doesn't even have a clip so you can't clip it on anything that's why I put a dangler on it okay so for travel we don't want to be thinking of these things and we do not want to have the hassle of dealing with a slippery flashlight or a flashlight that you can't clip anywhere okay so these are out of the running for my ideal travel flashlight okay speaking of grip this is one of my favorite flashlights this is the Bushnell okay pro 125 and the grip on this thing is absolutely <laughs> extreme okay i have another flashlight that also has these extreme knurling and i remember making a video on that that's the um, sog dark energy series of flashlights and the knurling on those things are really really aggressive so aside from the the crenellated bezel it even has a protrusions from the tail switch so when you press it those protrusions actually dig into your hand so you really know when you're pressing the the tail switch okay but the aggressive knurling on the side 
really ensures a good grip. Okay? So, it does that, but it makes the flashlight really aggressive looking. Okay? So, what we want is good grip and retention without being too aggressive. Okay? So, maybe these uh, basic uh, patterns of knurling would be okay. Maybe some basic ridges on the flashlight would be okay. Alright. So, I'm holding this one. This one is what I carry most of the time. This is a Claros XT1A. This uses a 14500 battery, can use a double A or even a triple A battery. It has two paddles, uh, a paddle switch and a tail switch. I was gonna say it has two switches at the tail, okay? It has instant strobe, instant high, okay? So this is another great EDC flashlight option, but it is a little too tactical looking for travel. Okay, so how about pen lights? Okay, pen lights are a great option. They have good grip because they're sufficiently long. There's that surface area that you can hold on to. But for travel, they're a little bit too long to carry around and you don't want to be seen carrying a long black tube. Speaking of retention, I suggest that your flashlight should have a good pocket clip. Okay, why? Because you might be clipping this to your bag, the inside of your bag, and you do just don't want to drop it inside your bag and takes a long time to find. Okay, that's why the pocket clip is useful to clip onto the inside of your bag so it doesn't fall inside and takes you like half an hour to rummage through the contents of your bag. Okay, you said pocket clip. Do I recommend you clipping your flashlight to your pocket? During travel, no. Okay, why? For example, let me go back to the flashlight that I always clip to my pocket. Okay, when I'm home. So if you, this is a common way to carry the flashlight. If you're carrying your flashlight this way, people on the street can immediately identify that you have something in your pocket. And they might think that that's a flashlight, which is correct, or they might think that that is possibly a knife or some sort of weapon, okay? And during an emergency situation, you do not want to get profiled, okay, as somebody who can possibly defend themselves or somebody who has some gear or somebody who is a prepper, okay? So, you want to be discreet or they, as they say, you want to be like a gray man. And during travel, I do not recommend doing this unless that is the image you want to, to portray or project in that area. Okay? So, where do I carry my flashlight? So, I always carry a flashlight in my bag, but on my person... I would carry a smaller flashlight and keep it in the fifth pocket of my pants or my jeans, okay? You might have the, it clipped or even totally inside the pocket. Number 18. So for your travel flashlight, I suggest that it has the option for head mounting or backpack strap 
mounting. Some people bring an extra headlamp. Bring an extra headlamp creates more weight, okay? And something that you need to pack extra batteries for. So for travel, I suggest something that can be used for a headlight or a headlamp. Okay, so for example, these Nikron B74 or the B74Es come with uh, a head strap that you can actually mount your flashlight on. Okay, so you can use these flashlights as a, a headlamp. Okay, another example would be using the same flashlight on the strap of your bag. Or if you have these uh, 90 degree flashlights, you can put it there. But as I was gonna say, even if you just have a straight flashlight, you can get head straps for these that can mount on the side of your head. And you can use the, these as headlamps. You just need to be mindful not using something that is particularly too powerful. For example, this one okay, shoots 3,500 lumens. You don't want something mounted on your head and shoots 3,500 lumens and blinds you or burns the side of your head when it gets really hot. Next, 19. You want a flashlight that can't be accidentally activated in your bag or your pocket meaning it has to have a stiff switch or some other mechanism to prevent it from being accidentally activated okay i was talking about my one of my favorite flashlights the lumintop fwaa okay great flashlight great everything but this switch is so easily activated okay just a light tap and it turns on so if I have this either clipped here or in the fifth pocket sometimes when I sit down and I am driving I feel that my pocket is getting hot because I accidentally turned on the flashlight just what I was saying right so although this flashlight has a lockout function one two three four and even if you press it okay it just has that lockout mode and other flashlights have lockout modes too you don't want to be bothering with lockout modes during your travel when you're traveling you have an issue, you want to use your flashlight, you don't want to be thinking of how many button presses is it to unlock my flashlight or things like that. Okay, so the best choice would be having a flashlight with a um, stiff switch. If I bang this, it doesn't turn on or this one has a protected button doesn't turn on okay or some have side switches okay but for example this one it easily turns on okay so you have to test which flashlight is the best for you okay so for example this one the flashlight but the button on the side is recessed and cannot be easily activated all right <clears throat> and if you have a flashlight that can easily be activated just unscrew the tail cap a little bit and it will be locked out so that's a uh, one option if your flashlight is easily activated another characteristic of my ideal travel flashlight is that it doesn't have a magnetic tail cap what do i mean magnetic it, the thing sticks right so i do not want my 
flashlights to be sticking to anything. Okay? Although this is a really useful function, especially if you're working on the car, okay, and you want to stick this onto the body of the car, okay, and you are now working hands-free. But for travel, I suggest not having something with a magnetic tail cap. Why? Because you do not want that magnet to demagnetize any of your bank cards or credit cards or ATM cards and possibly causing an issue during your travel, okay? So it is something that is not likely to happen anyway because most of the wallets now are protected, things like that. But we do not want to take that chance. So I try to avoid any magnets coming close to the cards that I bring, especially credit cards and ATM bank cards. All right. So no magnets. The last point that I want to make uh, for the ideal travel flashlight is that it should not, okay, and I don't want to offend anyone or be controversial, okay? This is completely optional and just my opinion. I think that the ideal travel flashlight should not be colored black, okay? So that's ironic because most flashlights out there are colored black okay most of the flashlights here are black okay but what i'm saying is if you have the choice is get a flashlight for travel that is not in the color black why because something that is black long and made of metal may not be immediately identified as a flashlight it may be identified as some sort of weapon, a kubotan, a stun gun, or just a metal rod, okay? So when you're at a security checkpoint, you want something that is not immediately identifiable as a weapon or does not trigger that uh, idea that it might be a weapon so it's a good choice to get flashlights in alternative colors many flashlights have options to get uh, non-black flashlights for example I love getting my flashlights in this desert tan or brown color okay you can get flashlights in different colors like this purple Okay, or if you're getting an alternative metal flashlight that's not aluminum, you can get copper or brass. So it's not black. Although I discussed already the other considerations when choosing a flashlight. So I love carrying these gray flashlights and these are made of titanium. Okay, so when you put your stuff in a tray, and they're not colored black, so they, do, they don't immediately trigger uh, concern with the person in authority. Okay? So, that's it. So, those are the characteristics of my ideal flashlight. Quite a few. Okay? I'll list them down on the screen Maybe one by one as I discuss the I discussed them in this video. So what are we left with? Okay. So there are actually still a lot of flashlights out there that fit the bill. But for me, at least for travel, okay, for travel, my best 
travel flashlight is this one. So this is an i5R EOS. Okay, and personally, in my opinion, this is the best travel flashlight. Okay, so I think a lot of people don't like O lights. Okay, but I find them to be okay. You can get something from another manufacturer, another brand, just as long as you have the characteristics I mentioned in the video. So, does this fit the bill? Okay, so it uses a modern LED. I can use it to search in my bags, walking at night for reading because it has a low mode. It does not have sharp or pointy parts. Okay, flat bezel, nothing protruding from either end. It is totally non-aggressive, very common. The brand Olight is fairly common nowadays. They're mainstream. Okay, cannot be mistaken for a weapon. Okay, it can be mistaken as a lipstick, but possibly, most likely not a weapon. Okay, does not cycle through strobe. It only has low, high, low, high, low, high. So whatever I press, however I press, I don't get a strobe. Small, pocketable, not bulky and not heavy. This is made of titanium. You can get it in, in aluminum as well. Okay, so how does it carry? I can put it here, but I do not suggest that one during travel. I put it here in my fifth pocket. So you don't even, you barely see it unless I'm untapped, but it basically dis disappears in your pocket. Next, it uses common batteries. The i5R comes with a rechargeable, okay? Rechargeable 14500 battery. It has, okay, in battery charging. So it has good run times. So this uses 14500 and AA's. And because it doesn't have a spring at the other end, you can't directly use a triple A. It will not turn on, it's shaking inside. You can obviously hack that one. Or you can carry a very, very cheap battery adapter. Okay, you can get a battery adapter that converts your triple A into a double A sized battery. So now, I can use triple A's on this flashlight. Okay? But in any case, you run out of power in this one, you can always use your power bank to recharge. It doesn't have a port for charging, so some people do not like having the external charging port, okay? Because that rubber boot will actually wear out and fall out eventually, okay? So some people do not like having that on their flashlight. It has, you can bring extra batteries. It's, it has good run times. It's relatively inexpensive. You can get it at most outdoor shops. It has reasonable brightness, durable. It can withstand some drops and getting wet. It's IPX8. You can get primary and secondary units. Personally, I carry an i5R and an i 3 TEOS that uses AAA. Okay, so I don't need to carry the the adapter, so I just carry an extra flashlight. Okay, it has good grip and retention. 
it can be mounted using a pocket clip and it has head mounting or strap mounting as an option it can't be accidentally activated in your pocket or bag no magnetic tail caps and you have the option to get something that is not in black okay so this ticks all the boxes for me as the best travel flashlight that's just my opinion you may have another preferred travel flashlight okay and if you want to share it just put it in the comment section what is your best travel flashlight so this is a pretty long video but i hope i was able to show you a very comprehensive description on what the ideal travel flashlight is so share with me your comments suggestions if you totally disagree with me or if you agree with me put it in the comment section and i'll see you on the next video